I've known you for 35 years, and a lot of people obviously know you as a boxer. Great heavyweight champion, one of the greatest heavyweight champions that ever lived. Tonight is a perfect night of fight. Here I come. The first time I met him was I was actually boxing in the uh, Pan American Games. I, I want to know what he thinks. Got down, went past, went to shake Muhammad Ali's hand. He said, I used to be great. Now you're the greatest. I met him after I lost in Africa. Man Mandela and, you know, he's, he said, what happened in the fight? I said, oh, man, you know, he hit me with a lucky punch. He said, yeah, don't worry, man. He's gonna, you're going to beat him the next day. A next man gave me confidence. He's like, you know, he believes in me. He said, yeah, don't worry. That was a lucky punch. You'll, you'll beat him next time. Yeah. Just that easy. And I felt good. This is the man. And I had to ask him one question. You know what the question was? How did you feel being in jail so long? His answer was, I forgave them. The decision is even a draw. Both champions retain their belts. That's a travesty. There was a draw, right? Yeah. And you damaged them. How did you prepare yourself to come back from a, a match that you clearly won? It was, it was like this. You know, I was glad because before that, you know, when you're getting your hair cut in the barber store and everybody's saying, <laughs> Yeah, everybody's so saying, yo, Tyson's it. the best. <laughs> oh, Holyfield can beat Lennox. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, you got to prove it. Nobody could see the difference until we actually got into the ring and we boxed to each other. Everybody's point of view was, oh, yeah, you know, Lennox is better. He won. And he actually won that fight. Even though they didn't give me the belts, the people's opinions right. was that I won the fight. So I was happy with that. So it didn't really bother me too much. Right. Me and Holyfield were at a, at a weigh-in and then you know, he's acting like this and I'm acting like that. And it wasn't until the man came in and he was singing. Right? I was like, this guy's coming in to the ring. <laughs> he's singing, I'm serious. <laughs> and yeah. I said, okay, yeah. all right. right. It, it gave me strength mm -hmm. because I said, yo, I want to make sure he, he, he doesn't sing. Deal but, with him. Yeah, I'm going to deal with him. Yeah. His, face, his face there about coming in the ring wants to sing. Right. After that fight, the rematch, you mm -hmm. know what he did when he came into the ring? Yeah. He never sang. My mom sacrificed that I eat very early for me. You know, uh, the first thing was, am I eating all right? You know, so she would always make sure that I was fed correctly. I remember meeting uh, Muhammad Ali's trainer one time, and he said, well, what are you eating? And I said, uh, you know, Jamaican food. He said, what? Jamaican food, what's that? to uh, the other guy that was with him, and he said, you know, it's some good food. He said, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is what you gotta eat all the time. The support from your family is, is very important. It really helps you, you know, feel good because they're kind of going through it the same as you. My mom came to camp and was like the camp cook, wow. just making sure that I was, you know, I was well looked after.